What's up guys, the February Patreon rewards are now available. Terminate, Elspeth's Sun's Champion, and the Ur Dragon are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves, or by clicking the link in the description below. What's up guys, welcome to another Let's Open video, and today, let's open a pack of Legions. Legions is a awesome set, so obviously way, way back in the day, I don't actually know what uh, year it was released, uh, looks like 2003. Um, lots of really cool stuff in this set, it was very, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's been a while, but if I'm not mistaken, it was very tribal focused, so we'll get to see a lot of that synergy as we go through. The old style card frame, really, really sweet as well, so I'm hoping to uh, enjoy some of that. I know a lot of people have commented saying they really enjoy the old card frames. I am a sucker for the old card frames. I'm also weirdly a sucker for white border cards, which nobody else seems to be, uh, but I really, really like this set. Um, I'm going to do this, and then I believe that. Uh, to avoid seeing the rare right off the bat. So uh, we'll see what we get. We are going to draft this, uh, so at least do our best to figure out what our draft pick would be. I didn't draft during this time. I'll be honest, I collected a little bit. So uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Hopefully it'll be a learning experience for everybody. If you do have any knowledge on legions that you feel could be shared or would be a really good talking point, please let it be uh, known in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate it. I know a lot of other people would as well. So our first card here, Void Mage Apprentice. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. Uh, features the morph mechanic, so you can play it face down as a 2-2 two, two creature for 3 of any color. Uh, but then you can turn it face up at any time for its morph cost. And in this case, that morph cost is 2 and 2 blue. Uh, when it's turned face up, you counter target spell. Pretty straightforward card, but a very good one. Uh, obviously featuring the wizard card type, uh, creature type, so there is a blue kind of wizard theme in this set. Um, I actually really like this card solely because it's, I mean, on turn three, it's a, it's a two, two. And then on turn four, it's a surprise counter. Uh, and I really, really like that. So I think this is a strong pick again. We're going to be learning together, so I don't necessarily know, but I really like that. Uh, Whipgrass Entangler is a one, three for two and a white, uh, pay one and a white until the end of the turn targeting a target attacking creature gains this creature can't attack or block unless its controller pays one for each cleric in play uh, obviously this is a cleric most likely you'll have other ones in play as well uh, as far as this goes it's a one three for three which is not great i do like that ability but that's a pretty heavy mana sink uh, and that doesn't actually work out in your favor a lot of the time uh, solely because they only have to pay one for every two that you're paying so that's kind of bad mana exchange it is what it is. I think it's fine. It's a good mana sink for later in the game, for sure, to like hose down a bomb or something like that. Uh, but in general, I don't think it's very exciting. I definitely would rather have the Apprentice. Uh, ooh, this is a strong card. Uh, Ma Mace Tail Hystrodon. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, is six and a red, so pretty expensive for a 4-4 four -four with First Strike and Haste. Uh, the fact that it has first strike and haste is great, but it is seven mana. Seven mana is a lot of mana for a 4-4. Four -four. Uh, it's just going to be outpowered. Uh, that being said, it does have cycling for three. So you can pay three, discard this card from your hand, and draw a card. Uh, you can do that at any time, which is really, really nice. And what cycling does, and we've actually seen that since, uh, I believe it was in Dominaria? I think we had cycling return. Um... The important thing about cycling, though, is it gives really expensive cards early game value. Uh, because, you know, if you're not going to be able to play this for quite a while, uh, but you're looking for maybe a removal spell or a different creature or something like that, just cycle it away. It doesn't matter. You can do that. And you can do that at instant speed, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I do like this card, but solely because it's a cycler, I, if it didn't have cycling, I don't think I would ever play it. It's just way too expensive. Uh, and so for that reason, I think I'm still going to stick with the Apprentice. <clears throat> uh, Skirk Marauder is a 2-1 for 1 and a red. It has Morph. Uh, again, this time you can flip it face up for 2 and a red. Uh, when it's turned face up, it deals 2 damage to target creature or player. Ooh, really like that. So uh, the good thing about this is it is, uh, I mean, it's damage on a stick. It's great. You can either hit a uh, creature or a player, so you have a little bit of flexibility there. The downside to doing that is that you're doing it very, very late. Uh, it's a, it comes down as a 2-2 two, two for 3, which is fine. 
You flip it face up the next turn, so on turn four, you're probably going to kill something, but you're also going to be behind the eight ball in terms of damage and everything. Now, that being said, Void Mage Apprentice does have the same issue, so I kind of get that. I think this is better than Void Mage Apprentice. I might be wrong again for anybody that drafted Legions, please let me know, but I do think this is a stronger pick. Uh, Crypt Sliver. Oh, I forgot Slivers were in this set. Uh, a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black, and all Slivers have Tap Regenerate Target Sliver. Uh, if you don't know what the Slivers do, essentially they all buff all Slivers. So this one gives this ability to all Slivers. Uh, that could be your opponent's Slivers, worth noting. Uh, I do believe they fixed that in like M15 or something when they brought them back. But uh, this is a, a very, very strong tribe if you can make it work. This is not the reason, this is not a card that would force me into slivers by any means, but if we get something stronger throughout the, the later part of the pack, it could be. So uh, definitely not the card I'm going to pick here, but slivers are very, very strong if you can get them to work. They do, they do tend to be all color though, which is a little bit tricky. Uh, goblin Turncoat is a 2-1 for one and a black. Sacrifice a goblin and regenerate goblin turncoat. Uh, perfectly fine, because honestly, you can just swing in with a bunch of goblins. If one gets blocked, you sacrifice that one, and then this gets regenerated, which is kind of nice. That being said, it's definitely not as good as Skirk Marauder. It'd go in the same deck, but, uh, not super exciting here. Don't think this is a reason to be in goblins by any means. I think Skirk Marauder does a much better job of that. <clears throat> uh, Echo Tracer is a 2-2 for 2 and a blue. Uh, it does have morph for two and a blue as well, and then when it's turned face up, return target creature to its owner's hand. So this is much more my style of card. Uh, I do kind of think the Marauder is better. Uh, it's a little more aggro, and it deals with the creature a little more permanently uh, if you're going to tag a creature with it. Uh, but I love bouncing. I love tempo plays. I love stuff like that. So I do think this is a very strong card, uh, especially in that wizard-themed deck. I think it's quite good. So uh, I do like this. I still think the Skirk Marauder is probably better, so I think I'll take it here. But again, that could be incorrect, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Quick Sliver is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a green. You can play it anytime you can play an instant, and then any player may play Sliver cards as though they were played at instant speed. So you can do that at any time, which is really cool. Um, Quick Sliver, interesting one. I still don't think it's a reason to be in the Sliver deck, uh, but it is a very powerful effect. The fact that you can just basically leave up your entire hand uh, if you're playing the Sliver deck and you have this out, uh, I guess technically you don't even have to have it out. You just flash it in, then flash whatever else in you want. So uh, the fact that this gives everything instant speed uh, flash is pretty awesome. Uh, again, it's not an overly powerful effect. It's not a reason I want to be in slivers necessarily, uh, but I do think this is very, very good. Uh, Defiant Elf is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green with Trample. Uh, this, is, this is like a functional... Well, I guess Charging Badger was a functional reprint of Defiant Elf, where it was exactly the same. 1-1 one, one for 1 green with Trample. Uh, that seems silly by all logic, uh, but if you can pull off like a artifact equipment, which I doubt there's any in this set, but enchant creature maybe, something like that, really buff it up. It's actually a really solid turn one play. I don't really like it though, to be honest. It, you got to invest a lot of stuff to make this good, and I don't like that. I'd rather I just have a good card on the face of it. Oops. Uh, Skirk Outrider. Uh, is three and a red for a two two goblin. Uh, gets plus two plus two and has trample as long as you control a beast. Uh, so pretty solid card if I'm honest. If you've got beasts, uh, which are very prominent in red, uh, then this is a super solid card. Uh, I do think the Skirt Marauder is better because it's just kind of good on its own. Uh, this has to have something else on the field to make it good. Four mana for a 2-2 on the face is very bad, uh, so just keep that in mind. But I do think this is an okay card if you find yourself with a high beast input on your deck. Uh, I think you probably take it then, though. You don't necessarily take it uh, with, as like a first pick. Uh, Hundru Hundrug? It's a card. Uh, it's a 4-7 for 6 and a green. Uh, it has cycling for 3. So very similar to the Mace Tail that we saw. Again, I can't justify playing it, though. This one is a little bit better, uh, but it's really not amazing. Uh, the fact that it's a 4-7... 
it's going to live a lot, but it's not going to swing in very often, most likely. I mean, it might, but it's just going to get, you know, blocked by like a four or five would be all you need. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't think this is amazing. I think I'd still rather have the Marauder. I may be misevaluating it. This is a time when creatures were not necessarily as powerful as we see them now. So that is worth noting. Uh, but I don't necessarily think this is better than the Marauder. I think the Marauder, the fact that it trades off with something on the, on the more flip, uh, is very good. Uh, Cloud Reach Cavalry is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a white. It gets plus 2, plus 2, and has flying as long as you control a bird. Very similar to the uh, Outrider that we saw. It's fine, but like not amazing unless you have a bird out. Uh, if you have a bird out, it's great, like super good. But I don't think it's worth it. Uh, I, I think I'd still rather have the Marauder. You're not relying on other cards. You That's one... I'll say one kind of uh, pitfall or trap that a lot of players fall into is, well, this card could be good. Well, yeah, that's great. But you rely on other cards to make it good. And so what you end up doing is you play out, even if you get a bird out with this, for instance, well, the opponent kills the bird and all of a sudden neuters another creature as well. And so you're they're getting a lot more value off of one spell uh, solely because this gets a buff off of that. So if you can spit out a lot of birds, maybe it's worth it, but I don't really love it uh, on the face. It's still not my favorite. <clears throat> uh, Liege of the Axe is a three, is, excuse me, three and a white for a two, three. Uh, doesn't, uh, it does not tap during its attack. Uh, so it essentially has vigilance. It can morph for one and a white, and then when it's turned face up, you untap it. Uh, that's interesting. I don't think that's good. Uh, it doesn't seem all that good. So, yeah, it's a Vigilance creature, uh, but you're paying four mana for a 2-3, which is not great stat-wise. Uh, the fact that it has Vigilance is nice. It's going to be able to block some stuff, but, like, I don't think it's worth it. It's, why does it matter if it's untapped, uh, if it has Vigilance? That doesn't make any sense. So, I don't love it. I guess you can surprise. that. I guess that makes sense. If you attack him with it as a 2-2, two -two, you can then morph it, untap it, and then hopefully block on the opponent's side. Uh, you can do that at any time, so it is kind of instant speed, which is great, but I don't love this. I don't think it's very good. That's a lot of effort to put into one card, uh, to be honest. Again, I might be incorrectly evaluating it, but that's just my my first look. Uh, Mistform Wake Caster uh, is a 2-3 for 4 and a blue with flying. Uh, you can pay one. It becomes the creature type of your choice until the end of the turn. Kind of interesting in this set. Uh, and then two and two blue. Tap it. Choose a creature type. The type of each creature you control becomes that type until the end of the turn. You know, in a tribal set, that's probably very, very good. <clears throat> um, it also is a flyer, which we've not really seen a dedicated flyer except for the whatever it was, the cavalry. Uh, and that wasn't even a dedicated flyer. It's temporary. Uh this seems better than most of the other cards that we've had. Skirk Marauder seems still pretty good, though. Um, I'm going to keep them together. We'll see what our rare is. It is Ghastly Remains. So it's a 0, zero for 3 black. Uh, it has Amplify 1. So as it comes into play, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each zombie card you reveal in your hand. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if Ghastly Remains is in your graveyard, you can pay 3 black. If you do, return it to your hand. Well, got to be honest... This seems like the way to go. Uh, Built-in recursion all the way. I'm super in. Uh, yeah, you do have to reveal some zombies from your hand, but zombies have a way of recurring, obviously. Uh, so I'm into this. Uh, I think just on the face of it, this is the most powerful card. It's a little sad. Uh, the creatures back in the day were not amazing. Uh, again, please feel free, of course. Let me know. If you drafted during Legions, you probably have a better perspective on this than I do. Uh, so I'm super happy to talk about it, hopefully get a better perspective myself, uh, and hopefully help some other people out as well. So Ghastly Remains is my pick, but again, I could be wrong. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to, to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But... That's going to be it for me, guys. I'll see you in the next Let's Open video.